Hey, this is Mike with Cross Current TV. Today we're gonna go over raft repair. What I thought we would do is we would start off with what you basically get with your raft and then what I feel you should add to your repair kit. Typically you'll get a dry box with the glue for that boat, some small patches, one little ream of fabric, a basic tool, for buffing things out and sealing it down. Valve repair material, a valve wrench, the Allen wrench, a bolt and a nut, matches whatever your frame system is. Things that I feel that you should add, we've actually had accidents before where we just didn't have enough glue. I get lots more fabric. You're gonna want big pieces and small pieces, a black magic marker. There's a product out there called Terraid that you can put on and will get you through a day or two. I've actually used it on waders. You have your pump. I always carry extra tips, extra sandpaper, 180 or above for your grit, a needle that's designed for going through this material with thread when you have a really big problem so that you could thread and bring together a tear in your boat and from that point be able to glue your patches on. If you had a shoelace and you had to do it with that, you could do it with that. If you truly want that glue to harden up, you add a resin to it. It helps to harden up the glue and speed up the time. This is about four inches long. Maybe larger than some of your standard stuff, but not by far the largest I've ever had. You want two inches additional fabric on all sides of your tear. So if this is a four inch uh, lengthwise cut, you want it to be eight by four. I've taken a piece of fabric and I've rounded off those corners. You don't want to leave squared corners on your fabric. The patch itself will get torn off. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just trace it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. And what that does is just give me a reference of what I need to buff out. It helps your adhesive hold better on those areas. I pre-buff all these out with sandpaper. And then all you need to do when you get out on the river is take care of buffing out this stuff. With your kit, you're given a basic roller. You would just take this thing and you wanna give it buffed patterns in one direction. Try to stay within your lines and you're just trying to make it a dull version of what the fabric is. Don't press too hard. You don't wanna to start to where you start seeing the threads of the fabric itself. But what I prefer is I just take my sandpaper, sand it out, get a decent little pattern on it. It just seems to work faster for me as well. So go one way and then go the other way. If I hadn't already done this one, I would take my patch and you have to do the same thing to the patch. Make sure you get it all the way out to the edges of it for a Hypalon boat. Toluene's the product that you want to clean it with before you lay your patches on there. I would dip a little bit of this stuff into it and I'm gonna take that rag and I would wipe it down just to clean it. If it's raining outside, water is a big problem. You want to have a way that you can cover yourself up. I went out on a trip one time where we didn't bother to bring a tarp or anything with us. And of course I was doing the repair at night, pouring down rain. I had to pull it into the tent with us and it wasn't great sleeping in the tent with those fumes blasting us out all night long. Because I don't want to mix this accelerant, into the glue. I don't want to put the accelerant in here and then put this brush back in here because you will start to harden up this glue. And that's what these little plastic things are for. Very small amount because if you actually use too much of the accelerant on any of the types of glues, it will actually go the opposite end and soften it. They recommend that you have gloves. They talk about eyewear. You want to make sure that you have good ventilation. I added a little bit of glue, pull a little bit of my Accelerant, and you can see, I mean, I barely have any accelerant in this. I'm gonna mix it into it. And then this is where I'm gonna get my other brush. In a pinch, you could grab a stick, kind of clean that stick off, and we just want a small amount on here. And I have made my mistakes here too, because I was so worried about a tear that we had one time, and so I overdid it, and then we ran out of glue. So I was worried about getting another hole the rest of the trip. Make sure you get all the way out to the edge of what you marked and all the way right up against the patch. So then I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. The biggest bummer part about this is that if your buddies are like mine, they're fishing while you're doing this repair, while you're getting eaten alive by bugs. This is a pretty curly patch right now. I might even consider just kind of setting something on the edges so I didn't have to sit here and hold it. And you can see how the, the first part of the patch is starting to dry up. See how it's starting to turn kind of a whiter color around those areas. And because I added the accelerant to it, it's actually going at a decent pace. The product's dried to the point where it's, I can feel that it's just tacky, but it's not really holding on to my finger right now. 
I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a small amount of glue. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't get it in with the old glue right now. Small amount of the accelerant. Mix them together and then flash it, which is put another layer of glue on top of it. I'm using an even smaller amount. I'm just gonna to try to kind of wipe it on. This is gonna reactivate that glue that we already put down. Now we're gonna reflash this side. And I always find kind of something when I'm out there doing this, like a cooler lid or something because I don't wanna get dirt into what it is that I'm doing. And that's what I do out in the field two, two times. With regards to the company that built this boat, they recommend three times but I've never ever had a problem with a boat where I've done it two times and like I said, I've had some pretty horrendous holes. This is a contact cement and you want to get your ducks in a row to do this. Once you touch it, it's, it's staying where it's at. That's again why I like the black magic marker trick, just because I can truly see what it is that's going on. It goes down and I push from the center to the outsides to get any bubbles out. It's okay if there's glue on the top, it's just gonna harden up. Roll from the center to the outsides and you're just trying to push any air bubbles that might possibly be there and get those air bubbles out. If you did see a bubble in there or whatever, you would really wanna concentrate on that area. So now I can kinda see that I've hit every single area. And so now I'll just kinda start making sure that I get it all, making sure that I've got good contact everywhere. And that's to include right around these edges because I don't want these edges starting to peel up. The time frame for it to dry is, is totally dependent on the humidity that's in the air, the temperature that, that you have out there, but I've done repairs when it's been pretty darn cold, pretty darn windy, and pretty rainy. I hope you learned something today about uh, what I think that you should have extra in your repair kits, as well as how to go about doing a basic repair out in the field. This is Mike with Cross Current TV. We'll see you next episode. At Cross Current TV, we want to hear from you. We'll take your questions and ideas posted to our Facebook or YouTube pages and use them for future episodes. And click here to check out the trailer for our first fly fishing adventure movie, Cast Alaska, available now on DVD. Oh, I can't even say it. It's polymethylene, polyphenol. <laughs> Let's skip that part. Uh.